today i wish to discuss communication regarding events so how many of you have participated in organizing any component of any event 1 2 3 oh large numbers okay are are you most of you research scholars no some of you are okay fine so what events Ah, fundraising campaign. Okay, that's a tough job. So let us write down some of the things. Fundraising event. Fundraising for a particular activity. any other event that uh, somebody has participated in yeah you can do sorry free software camp okay You, what have you organized? Sorry. E E summit. What is that? Event organized by. So when you say E E does not stand for electronic but for entrepreneurship. Right. So you say entrepreneurship summit. Uh, for tech fest. so multiple events. you participated in e summit okay why do you call it summit and why not camp okay somebody else which part yeah of tech fest what part oh you are chief coordinator of tech fest wow it's a big one none of you have participated in organizing paths no hostel paths they happen or they don't happen anymore they happen But the postgraduate students stay away from them, or what? No. Uh, as computer science students, how many of the M Tech have visited the poster presentations which the research scholars organized recently? Nobody. One. Two. Okay. It tells me that. you people are primarily not interested in research related communication but everything else that is fine uh, what about research scholars i hope they at least participated in the so the post presentation even let me generalize it to say any now this could include posters this could include conference workshops whatever okay now today i wish to discuss with you some important aspects of communication or effective communication related to these events those of you who have not participated in organizing events would have received communication related to such events was that communication adequate was it well worded did you receive it in time did it ask for any immediate action on your part if you did not fulfill that requirement or expectation did you get a reminder 
there are some very mundane questions when I am a prospective participant in an event. So as a prospective participant, what kind of communication I should get? Those who organize the events, most of the time in India is spent by such organizers in handling actual logistics. Whether the event room is ready or not, whether the furniture is there or not, whether the speakers have come in time or not, etc. Et but quite often, the aspect of effectively communicating to those who are concerned with the organization of the event, as well as those who are going to participate, is often missed out. Unfortunately, the event communication is completely related to and is in sync with the event organization. And more unfortunately, the people who are responsible for organizing the event are also responsible for ensuring that proper communication is done. And these two activities require a slightly different kind of expertise. People who are good in organizing logistics are not necessarily good in proper communication. Now, each one of us has to be able to communicate reasonably well under any circumstances. That is the objective. So here we will look at the communication aspect of event management. Any event that you wish to conduct or any event in whose conduct you are participating you will have a component related to interacting with people. And that interaction cannot be limited to verbal communication. It has to be uh, written communication of some sort. So the question, how many of you have written, actually drafted, a communication meant for the participants of any event? One. So what was that communication like? Was it an email or was it a poster or was it? In NIT Surat, okay. Surat Kal, ah, okay. Okay. Well, let me repeat this. He participated in organizing an event in his erstwhile college, uh, National Institute of Technology, Suratkal, NIT Suratkal, the erstwhile regional engineering college. And there, in one of the events, he had to issue a poster regarding the venue of the event, the timing of the event, and some basic rules. And he also had to send an email. Now, so what was the email content? So whatever the poster information was contained. How do you decide on whom do you send this email to? Did you send it as a mass mailer to all the student community in Suratkal? So there was a class group with already defined membership. How many people were there? So this email IDs you already had as a part of a spreadsheet or something? Oh, it was a Google group. Okay. One important take from this brief discussion is that when you have to send mails to 20 or 30 or 200 or 2000 or 20,000 people, you will generally not be typing individual email IDs. Because if you did, you will make a lot of mistakes and it will take a lot of time. So he resorted to using a Google group, whereas some others might resort to forming mailing groups, for example, and give a single name to it. Okay. An important aspect of effective communication for such event management, because without it, you will lose a lot of time. Please understand that effective communication and, in fact, a good event management is ultimately related to optimizing the time that is spent on any activity by the organizers and making life extremely simple and well-defined for all participants. That's the objective. 
So the poster that you wrote, uh, you would have probably written the draft yourself. Was it corrected by someone? You only. This is the right process. A poster is to be displayed. So I decide what should be the contents of the poster. And I myself correct it. And then put it across. So can you guarantee that the poster had zero errors? Possibly. Nobody complained. Okay. So the feedback was nobody complained, so therefore it is assumed that there were zero errors. He must have taken pains to ensure that there are no errors from his side. But as we have discussed time and again, it is often so that some others are able to find mistakes in whatever we write. And therefore, any such communication traditionally undergoes a revision or correction by someone else. Anybody other than the person who has written it. That is rule number one. Correctness of English language is syntactically important. But whether the content convey everything that is required to be conveyed about the event, how do you ensure that? For example, if there is a contest, you said there will be rules of contest. So are the rules exhaustive? All exhaustive rules, can they be stated in a single poster? Or would you have a link in the poster saying more exhaustive rules are listed somewhere else? You should refer to them. Perhaps you did not need them. Well, let's go to our friend from entrepreneurship chat. What was the event that you organized? Uh, multiple It can you? The big event, cutting multiple Right. Some uh, uh, some events are uh, idea teaching. Means the participants have given idea and they are teaching. Then another event or some. Uh, so take this idea. Did you, did you participate in organizing the idea event? I participated in lecture, uh, means organizing the lectures. Organizing the lectures, okay. How do you go about it? Uh, there were multiple lectures, uh, some from India, some from uh, Abroad. So, for each lecture. I see, she does not have a mind. So, let me repeat whatever she has said. For the sake of our recording, she said she was involved in organizing lectures. There were some speakers, she used the term lecturer. The lecturer term is often reserved for people who teach in established educational institutions. The people who speak on events are simply called speakers. So there were some speakers from India and some speakers from abroad. Now, did you have already a list of prospective speakers? Oh, so there was a manager. How did the person at the top hierarchy get the list in the first place, where the names will not fall from sky? Uh, some they got from their seniors, which, uh, last time, uh, I, last time who were the speakers, so those are the ideal bakaras to be called immediately. Uh, so some they got from uh, last time the She compiled a list of prospective speakers, let's say 20 speakers from India and 4 speakers from abroad, arbitrary, some such numbers. So you communicated with them later? So going into the activities of events and we are now concentrating on some particular portion and a sub portion and a sub sub portion of that activity. So this particular portion relates to making life simpler for a speaker who is coming from abroad, who is not familiar with the environment and therefore the event organizers decided that there should be a contact person for each speaker. The same contact person may be there for two or three speakers, but there should be essentially a contact person. And that contact person should make life simple 
for the speaker to come. So in which way did you make his life, his or her life simple? Yes, uh, by which side they are coming, uh, what they are doing. Then uh, he went there on airport to receive him. Then after he arrived there, uh, accommodation Yeah, but I am coming from uh, Cincinnati. Yeah. How do I know that you are coming to receive me or not? No, so, uh, you actually only... You just went to airport straight away. Did you, you not communicate to me that you are likely to come to receive me? No, Canada only told them that uh, some of us will come there and receive you. So I went there and uh, I was standing with okay. you. So you can see that... Right? He participated very actively. He has participated in executing the logistics. She has not so much participated in the communication part related to him. I was No, no, you are talking about communication, which is verbal communication between you and the speaker. I am talking about formal written communication before, during and after. After, yes, but before. Before, no. But did you see a mail which a manager had sent to that person? So how was that written? What did he say? Do you remember the exact words? Uh, maybe that was only the last, uh, last grade in the book. So I did not see the uh, earlier grade. The last mail was, uh, this, this person is out of the contact with the person. Okay. So rule number one in the While handling any event, all event related communication, unless it is confidential, should be kept at one place and should be visible to each and every person who participates in organizing that event. It should be accessible. It need not be read by everybody necessarily. But suppose I am given the responsibility as she was given to receive someone, then I should know exactly what past communication has happened between anyone from my team and that person. Because that will tell me the exact context which that person will bring in his or her mind when he or she arrives here. You agree? Now this is often not done here, but it ought to be done. Anyway, but suppose you were the manager and you have to frame the initial communication to a speaker. It has been identified, say, Mr. X from whatever, Cincinnati. So, so what will you write? No, no, no. We are writing for the first time to that person. He has, been, he has been referred to you as a prospective speaker. He is well known in certain area. Let us say he is a first generation entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur. He has just sold his company for $100 million. So he is a fairly rich person. And uh, because he is successful, he is probably eager to share his success story with me. So if IIT Bombay invites him for an event like this, he might be quite enthusiastic to accept. That's the mindset of Mr. X, possible mindset. Now in this mindset, you are writing a letter to him. So initially in first event, I will not directly tell him and request him to come for the event. But in, in the initial event, in first event, first event, I will try to uh, only tell him about the about our college, about classes, and about the event, and try to build first relationships, some kind of relationship. And then in the further further grade, I will request him to come. For sure, I thought should be that. For instance, she will write a letter to him or email to him, informing him of the event, informing him about our institute, and generally preparing a background. Okay. Suppose I am Mr. X, I'll be very surprised and curious to receive a communication which does not relate to me at all. You are just giving me some information about an event. There are more than 20,000 well-known institutions in the world. So is IIT Bombay, big deal. I am in Cincinnati and I get a letter just describing an event that is going to happen. Am I supposed to be impressed? Am I supposed to be interested? Or am I supposed to take this as a scam email?
In fact, I will be far more irritated if I get a long description of the event, still not making a single point as to why this 20 days is being said. So, so, so the, the reason I am bringing this up is that all of us have to become managers someday. And the right time to begin becoming managers is now. So we are trying to see that if we are managers, if we are in charge, what kind of community. So when you approach this career, I would like to suggest that the first itself must directly send an invite. Otherwise, Mr. X will not be interested. How will you write that invite is the question. How will you write that invite? Okay, so here is an assignment for the next seven minutes. Uh, Firuza, can you distribute those papers? And at the end, don't grab the blank pages. Keep them aside so that they could be utilized for the second assignment. Uh, there are some people short of pages. Here, here. Everybody got a blank page? Keep them. OK, fine. So immediate action, right? In the right hand corner of that page, write your name and roll number. That's all. The identity. It also serves as attendance. So we'll we'll assume that uh, we'll let us give uh, some name to this Mr. X. X. So how does Alex sound like? So Alex is an entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur. Do not forget that he has just made $100 million by selling off his company. So he's a rich entrepreneur. And you are inviting him. He lives in some place in Cincinnati. Forget the address. So you are required to write to dear Alex. So start with dear Alex. And in less than one side of the page, write your letter. You can say, you need not describe the event in greater detail. The event is an entrepreneurship related event in IIT Bombay, where young prospective entrepreneurs will come. The details of the event are in an attachment, which is like the event brochure or something, which you are sending along with the mail. You don't have to write huge details. However, you have to describe at least in two to three lines what that event is about and why would you like Mr. Alex to come and address the entrepreneur. What you have to clarify is the date of the event, the talk that you would like him to give. Say you can decide on some title up front or no, let, let me say he is a successful entrepreneur, I suggest this. So you now think about why you would like to call him. On what topic would you like to speak, uh, lay him to speak? You might want to give him a freedom to choose a topic, but you might want to suggest that it would be nice if he could share his thoughts on such and such topic. But alternately, you can sort of, whatever you wish to write in one page. So write an invitation to Mr. Alex to come and participate. Yeah. Cincinnati. So in Cincinnati in the United States, it is generally traditional to address people by the first name and to say dear. It is only in the uh, uh, prominently ex-European colonies of Asia where you say, write dear sir or respected sir or something like that. Okay? It is not uncommon in the United States to address people as dear so and so. Initially, I used to get uh, surprised when I would receive letters from uh, uh, people in the United States saying, Dear Deepak, now, in India you don't address people by first name unless you are very close to each other. But that is the uh, common thing. So even uh, when, I, uh, when I write to uh, uh, the Chancellor of Stanford University, okay, when I said, Dear Professor Hennessy, he responded saying, Dear Deepak, and signed as John. 
indicating to me that I was addressing him wrongly. So this is a different tradition, but it is perfectly fine if you do not want to say, Dear Alex. That's another important point, by the way. It also depends upon who is writing this invitation. So if one of the, uh, let's say, the CEO of Sign is writing that later, perhaps it would mean something else. Otherwise, you might write, Dear Sir. Perhaps Dear Sir is the simplest and most appropriate in the first communication. Fine. Okay, enough of discussion. Now you apply your mind and write a less than one page invite. You have exactly 10 minutes to do this. Write quickly, but write carefully. Finished? Not yet. Anybody else who has finished? I hope you remember that whatever you write is not actually going to Mr. Alex immediately. <laughs> so it's okay if, uh, okay, it's 10, 10 now, so please stop writing. It's okay if you have not been able to finish it. The idea that you start thinking about it. You have spent 10 minutes doing that. And I'll give you more time to think about it later. Just pass on all your uh, uh, write-ups to your right. Uh, you pass on all your write-ups to your right and please collect all of them from this row. Okay. So whatever you have been able to write is also a test for ourselves on how long it takes us to draft a letter. So that's okay. I hope you have understood that it's not a very simple task. A few people completed it fast, probably because they have written similar letters earlier. All right. So a couple of quick questions. How many of you mentioned the existence of sign on campus and the fact that there are several entrepreneurs who are already running startup companies in IIT? Sorry? Acha, it would be in the attachment. Uh, so a letter which goes for the first time to a successful entrepreneur need not mention even in a single line the important fact that sign exists on IIT Bombay campus? It's a question of relative importance. Please understand it. And this is probably happening because you yourselves do not appreciate what sign is. It's regarded as the most successful entrepreneurship incubator in the country. Several other incubators in the country were funded by the government only when they modeled the operations of those incubators on the lines of IIT Bombay. Now this fact, is probably known or heard of by that person. Because it's known everywhere. All entrepreneurs look at incubators very carefully in their early career. And they would look at global things. Even if he does not, it is important for you to state that. That is one. Second, how many of you have hinted that he should bear his own travel expenses? A hundred million dollars person, yes. I have a heart. So e-cell, forget, many of you may not know what e-cell is, but knowing that there is a student's body which is organizing that event, and knowing how much maramari you have to do to raise resources to run an event, 
Would it not be useful if some rich people spend their own money from their own pocket? But how do you write it cleverly such that you don't offend that person? The trick that is often used is you say that you are slightly low on resources and only where absolutely essential you would be able to fund the travel. And then hint that, of course, the great Mr. Alex does not need this kind of travel support and would be very eager to come and contribute to the discussion so that the students in IIT Bombay are motivated by his experience, something of that. You can use a bit of a flowery line. I said one page because you don't have time more than 10 minutes here to write that draft. But when you have more time, you can write slightly longer later. Now, I would like you to do two things. One, discuss it amongst groups of you, three or four people, in your hostel, in your wing, on the lunch table, wherever. Not more than five, ten minutes. But about the points that should be included in such a letter. Each one would have some ideas. I have shared a couple. Each one of you might have ideas on the language to be used, etc. Just spend 10 or 15 minutes, that's all. And then write an individual letter, type it directly, and submit it on the Moodle. This will not take more than about 40 minutes to write that letter. But it will take 40 minutes. So 10 minutes of discussion among you as group. Okay. So it's perfectly fine to plagiarize ideas. It is not plagiarism, is it collaboration. You collaborate, discuss it with four or five friends. If you want to take 20 minutes to discuss, take 20 minutes to discuss. That's absolutely fine. You should benefit from the ideas that other friends have. However, when you write, it has to be your own draft. There should not be any plagiarism in the writing that you do. Is that fair? Okay. So do that. And the deadline would be tonight. Because given more time, the work always expands to fill up available time. So. Midnight? Tomorrow night. Okay, tomorrow night. I wanted to save your time because of something else which is coming up now. We'll decide the final thing immediately. Okay. Number one, submissions on literature survey are due on Monday, 24th March. So like I already explained, those who are submitting a seminar report or an R&D project report or any academic report of a kind for their regular academic load should extract the literature survey part of that, complete it and write it. It should be written exactly in the form in which you will actually like to submit a detailed report. Your actual report in seminar may be a short report, but literature survey should be well written here. Let me tell you, this is going to be the most important and probably most advantageous part of this course for you. As we agreed, those 20 odd people who are not doing a seminar may do a survey on MOOCs literature. Please do not spend too much time because MOOCs literature is vast. But I leave it to each one of you to concentrate on any one aspect of MOOCs and do a literature survey like you would do for a seminar. Like you would do for a seminar. Please submit the literature survey along with the list of references. The references should be cited in your survey and the references should be written in appropriate IEEE format or the Department of CSE format which has been put up on the web. It should be a perfect report as if you are submitting it to your final examination. You should be proud of that report. That is the objective. Now that deadline is Monday 24th March. Because I would like to read some samples and comment on these on the next Tuesday. So I would not like that to be midnight because I may not be able to read most of those samples from midnight till morning. Or I can actually. So, all right. Twenty-fourth March midnight. That's the deadline. Now, in the light of this deadline, I wanted to save you from wasting your time in writing this letter. The letter is important, but not as critical as this assignment. So that is why I was suggesting tonight. 
but you are saying tomorrow night. We have exactly two minutes to resolve this because uh, given more time, you spend more time. That much is obvious. So, on the other hand, it is important uh, for you to ensure that you are able to draft such letter. Please remember that whenever in future you will write such letters, there will be much more wider consultation. But you would agree that this small 10-minute effort, which has kindled your thinking on how to write a letter, followed by a group discussion among you for 10-15 minutes over lunch or whatever dinner, followed by writing a letter, would perhaps make your writing instincts better. That's the idea. So what would you have it? All right, should we find a via media? Not midnight tonight, not midnight tomorrow, but sometime noon tomorrow, or it doesn't help. Sorry? Give me some opinions at least. What should be the deadline for this letter? Yeah. Sorry? If it is extended by one or two days. By any amount of time. The reason I have put this date is because this will give you enough time, at least one week, to discuss this literature survey with your own guide and make it a good part of your report. That is the idea. If I extend it further, then you will not have sufficient time to incorporate that. Please remember one thing, at least I recall it from my days and my research scholars and my MTech students. Whenever I think I have completed my literature survey and write a final report, it is at that time it dawns on me that perhaps a couple more references I should have studied in greater depth. Perhaps when I show it to my guide, my guide will say, Are Lallu, this paper you have missed. And I might have to read that paper. And to read that paper, to understand it, and to incorporate it in my final report will take some time. That's the only reason I'm saying. Come again? Or you have a quiz on Friday and Monday. Business will continue in life, my dear friend. <laughs> okay. So tell me what you have to do like. I have no problem. I can make it, for example, yes. uh, for which should I make? Friday. Friday? Next Monday. Next Monday. Next Monday. Next Monday. Next Monday. Next Monday. What is the date on next Monday? Friday. Friday. End of financial year. So submissions on literature due on Monday, 31st March, midnight. But this, these are hard deadlines. Okay. The later due, so then we can make it tomorrow night? What is tomorrow? Friday. And what is the date tomorrow? Midnight, fine. These are hard deadlines, and now I am making uh, something which is which my heart does not permit, but my mind says I must do it. Not only these submissions are mandatory, attendance in all classes from now onwards is mandatory. 100% attendance is required. Now, one important announcement is related to use of visuals in communication. So I have my colleague Samir Sastrav, they can you just stand up and face them so that you He has been with us for many years. He was the creator of our distance education program infrastructure for uh, synchronous communication using VSATs and so on. He's an animator of repute. He's credited with being part of a team which made the first full-length animation film in the country. That was in uh, 2002. It was a long time. He just finished his PhD, he has yet to defend his thesis. I call him Professor Samir because I invite him to give talks. 
He is also an expert on animation. So Blender animation is his foothold. However, he is also a designer. So I requested him to conduct two lectures, which will have, first lecture will have some assignments which will have to submit, will have to do some work. So this is use of visuals in communication. So how you can make your communication more effective by using visuals and how randomly using any visuals do not really add a value to communication, but in fact it can make it worse. So these are some fundamental useful aspects which we will discuss in the uh, two lectures on uh, on Thursday 27th March and Tuesday 1st. Uh, in the first week of April onwards, we will start formal presentations by people. They must be attended by all students. Okay. And those formal presentations which will be based on your literature survey. So that is one of the reasons why I wanted it earlier. But since we have delayed it, we'll delay these formal presentations. All right. Thank you so much.